hi guys in this video we will be looking at november 2023 as we are preparing for november 2024 paper 2 we'll be looking at question 5 as uh, we are preparing for trigonometry right guys um hope you did well in your paper one if you didn't you still have a chance to, to prove yourself you still have a chance to prove yourself um with this paper paper two make sure that uh, you give it your best right if you didn't do well in some parts in paper one right if you're new to the channel what are you waiting for kindly subscribe you only subscribe once and do not forget to like the video and share right so let's begin our video uh question five given that sine beta is equals to one over three where beta uh is the element of 90 to 270 our diagram will be on the second quadrant another thing that say, that made us to to think that our diagram will be on the second quadrant is that sine it's a home for sine and sine is positive on the second quadrant so sine uh, sine beta one over three will 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 have to 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 uh, construct a, 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 or draw a diagram so that uh, we are able to make out these questions. So in this case, remember we have sine uh, beta is equals to 1 over 3. So remember as of self, our diagram will be on the second quadrant. Let's sketch so this is y all over r uh, opposite all over hypotenuse right so since it's opposite all over hypotenuse our hypotenuse r will be three then let's say this is your beta there when you're standing here your opposite it's gonna be one and the missing part which is x we need to find this using theorem of pythagoras this will be x squared it's equals to r squared minus y squared. So we are going to say r squared minus 1 squared. We have x squared, which is equals to 9 squared. Uh, 3 squared is 9 minus 1. That will be 8. Then we have x squared. Square root of x, that will be negative root 8. Whew. Why I take negative root 8 instead of positive? Because on this left hand side we have, it should be negative, right? On the left hand side we have negatives. So we're going to have negative root 8. Then uh, at 5.1.1, remember, uh, at 5.1.1 we are required to, to determine each of the following. 5.1 was cos beta. For cos beta, guys, the value of cos beta will be, remember, it's cos, it's y, it's x all over r. Then your x, it's negative 8. So it's going to be negative 8 root 3. Negative 8 all over 3, not root 3. So let's look at 5.1.2. So for 5.1.2, we are required to determine sine 2 beta. You can see that's a double angle. So we need to change it. Since it's a double angle, it will be 2 sine beta and cos beta. As for 5.1.3, cos 450 minus beta whenever an angle is greater than 360 you keep subtracting by 360 so what is 450 minus 360 uh, let's punch our calculator that will be 90 so in other words we're going to have 90 minus beta but let's put that into practice 5.1.2 and 5.1.3 so oh, for 5.1.2 Remember, we were told that it's sine, okay, sine 2 beta. That will be 2, 2, uh, that will be 2 sine beta as well as cos beta so what i want you guys to understand is that this is the same as y all over r and x all over r so that you will then plug in your values so your y you know that's gonna be one and your r that will be one all over three and your x 
that will be negative negative root 8 all over 3 and from here when you are here you need to punch your calculator and give us the solution at 5.1.2 right so let's look at 5.1.3 we are given cos 450 minus beta remember minus beta what i told you is that you need to subtract this 450 minus 360 450 minus 360 it gives us 90 minus um 90 minus beta right so we have cos 90 minus beta sorry for my beta so which quadrant is this this is the first quadrant where all uh, trigonometric ratios are positive and remember when it's nine 90 minus uh, beta that's a core function so it will change to sine so we are going to have sine beta which which in which we told you that to sine beta it's one all over three so you will put uh, replace it by one over three so the solution it's one over three let me write it well here it's one over three so guys that's how you're going to work out 5.1.3 let's go to 5.2 now so as for 5.2 given that uh cos uh, to the power of 4x plus sine squared uh, multiplied by cos squared x divided by 1 plus sine x so we need to prove that this is equals to uh, 1 minus sine x which is uh, uh, 4 marks guys it's very essential that you 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 you, 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 you know how to factorize know your identities so in this case i can see that cos it's a common factor actually cos squared x is a common factor so we need to factor out the numerator so that we are able to work out uh, the denominator so let's work out 5.2.1 for 5.2.1 remember we are given cos to the power of 4x plus sine squared x multiplied by cos squared x okay divided by 1 plus sine x so remember we are required to prove that this is equals to 1 minus sine x so the simplest side is to work out the left hand side so if you take out the highest common factor the highest common factor is cos squared x then what are we going to be left with we are going to be left with cos squared so cos squared x cos cos squared x plus co, uh, multiplied by cos squared x it gives us cos to the power of 4x right so we will also plug in sine squared x there plus sine squared x because if you multiply this you get this and if you multiply this you get this whole path right so that means our factorization it's correct right so we have 1 plus sine x so we can see we have a square identity here square, we have a square identity so we have cos squared x what is cos squared x plus sine squared x that's one divided by uh, one plus sine x so we have uh, cos squared x multiplied by one that will be cos squared x uh, divided by one plus sine x we can find the identity of uh, of cos squared x remember cos squared x according to our square identity when you have sine squared x plus cos squared x, which is equals to 1, uh, let's say you make a uh, sine, your, your, your subject, you're going to take cos to the other side. So that will be sine squared x, which will be 1 minus cos squared x. Right? So, and when you make cos, the subject, you're going to take sine. The other way, that will be 1 minus sine squared x. But as we have here at the numerator cos squared x, so let's change it to sine since we have 1 plus sine x. The reason why I change it to sine is because at the denominator, I have, uh, I have, uh, I have sine, uh, sine x there. So cos squared x will be 1 minus sine squared x. So we have 1 minus uh, sine squared x divided by 1 plus uh, sine x, right? 
I hope guys are getting it. So what are the factors of 1? It's 1. Factors of sine, that will be sine x. Uh, factors is 1, and that will be sine x. Divide that by 1 plus sine x. So what about the sine? Since it's a difference of two squares, the other one will have a positive sign. The other one will have a negative sign. So both of these common brackets will cancel each other. These are common. What are we left with? Uh, we are left with 1 minus sine x at the left hand side. Thus, the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. Then hence proven. Then hence proven. You just need to know your identities. Learn and uh, learn to know where to factorize and how to factorize. That will give you that beautiful four marks. Right. Let's go to uh, our five point uh, our five point two point two. Right. We need to go to our five point two point two. Okay. So. All right. So. Let's see. So at 5.2.2, for what values of x in the interval 0 to 360 is undefined? Well, it will be undefined at the denominator. It will be undefined at the denominator. So what are we expecting? Remember, what are we expecting, guys? So we are going, since it will be undefined at the, at the denominator, we are going to equate 1 plus sine x is equal to 0. Then we solve for x, right? So we find those values that are undefined. Yes. That's how we are going to work with 5.2.2. Let's put that into practice. So um, in this case, we are at 5.2.2. .2. I said that we'll use the, our denominator, which is 1 plus uh, sine x is equals to 0, equate to 0. So what I'm going to do is to take 1 to the other side. If I take 1 to the other side, that becomes negative. So let me find the reference angle. All right, let me punch. So in that manner, while I'm punching, guys, what uh, I've discovered is that uh, we, we are going to have sine arc of 1 uh, that will give us 90 90 degrees and um, if we have negative 90 so if we have negative 90 some will have negative 90 uh, kindly added by or well, if we have 180 we're still gonna get 90 so since we have 90 there therefore what will be our x that will be uh, 90 or some will have um, ask ourselves where is the sign negative it's negative on the on the second quadrant on the on the third quadrant sorry for that on the on the third quadrant so 180 plus 90 uh, that will be 270 so we're also going to have a solution 270 right that will be 270 so this uh this is where it will be uh undefined at 5.2.2 uh, so we'll look at 5.2.3 right so let's put that into practice so in this case guys um we the, at 5.2.3 write down the minimum value of the function defined uh, by this graph so the minimum value guys in this case um uh, remember we got one minus um this is this is the same as one minus sine x if you were to find the minimum value the minimum value will be zero in this case will be zero even if you sketch you will see that uh, the minimum value here it's zero so that's your minimum value that's your minimum value at 5.2.3 so now we'll look at uh, 
1.1. We will be proving. Remember, they said that uh, cos, uh, given that cos, uh, um, cos, uh, cos a minus beta is equal to cos, the product of cos a and b plus the product of sine a and b. Use the above identity to deduce uh, the, uh, sine a minus b, which is equals to the product of sine uh, sine a equals b minus sine a uh, cos a sine b, right? So what I'm going to do, guys, that we, let's use this, what we are, whatever we are given. We are given sine a minus beta so that we are able to prove so that we're able to prove guys let's put that into practice to prove that this is equals to this right so let's put that into practice so uh 5.3.1 <clears throat> well they said we must use uh sine a minus b it's a compound angle of uh, sine, right? That's what we must use. So I'm going to use a core function of this. The core function of this will be cos 90 minus A minus B, right? Let me just use this bigger brackets there as well as here, right? So cos, cos 90 minus uh, A minus B, it's the same as this. It will give you this, right? will give you this this it's the same as this right so what i'm going to do here is to fix what is inside the bracket first so 90 will minus a and um can i put pick brackets remember this negative multiplies everything that is inside the brackets this will be 90 minus a negative and negative that will be plus uh, b so from there i can expand since this is a compound so i'm going to have 90 minus a and uh, uh, right actually this must be written as uh, b minus let me let me just put this which will be cos minus negative b right so when i write this i'm going to write it like cos negative b as well so negative and negative now we know that this will be plus sine 90 minus uh, a and sine negative b okay all right remember that we are given that uh this you must use this to get uh sine a cos b minus cos a sine b so how am I going to do this? Uh, if you change, this is a co-function. A co-function, of course, that will be sine A in other words. So I'm going to have what? Sine A here. So this is a home for cos. It's in the fourth quadrant, the negative angle. So that will be positive cos B uh, plus. So before I say this is plus. So what is the cofunction of, of sine? That will be cos A. Cofunction of um, sine negative beta. It's, it's not a home for sine on the fourth quadrant. So thus, this will affect this the sine of this. So we are going to have minus here. So in other words, we are going to have sine uh, B. We are going to have sine B. So our solution, actually our solution, therefore, we have sine uh a minus b which will be sine a uh, cos b minus cos a uh, sine b that's what i now we have proven it guys we have proven it now we have proven it we have proven it so practice such stuff it might be there on monday practice makes it perfect guys it might be there on Monday, so it helps you to uh, practice makes makes it perfect actually, right? Let's put that into practice. Let's go to five point three point two now. 
So let's look at the question first before we attempt anything. Before we attempt anything, uh, they said hence. Remember, we have proven this uh, nice and smoothly here. We just have to know the basics. Hence, or otherwise, you need to uh, determine the general solution of, uh, of this kind, right? So we have sine 48 cos x minus um, 48 cos 2x. So let's put uh, that into practice. In this case, remember, we have sine 48. We also have uh, cos x, sine 48, sine 48 cos x, uh, minus um, cos 48 uh, sine x, okay, which will be equal to cos 2x right so very important that is five marks so let's start with let's work out the left hand side first so uh, remember guys this it's a compound angle of sine sine cos and cosine right so if it was cos it will have sine sine and cos cos so in this case we are going to have uh, sine 48 uh, minus x which will be equal to when I was not supposed to start was to start with left hand side this there was no need for this right so we have cos uh, 2x so from there uh, right uh, from there what are we going to do what are we going to do guys so it's very essential that we, 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 we work it out. We work it out. Right. So from here, we need to find the, 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 the general solution. But here it must be sine and this side must also be sine. So cos, cos, right? That will depend on us.